The Greens MP Adam Bant will shortly introduce a bill into Parliament in an attempt to boost mining tax revenue. The Treasurer last week revealed the profit-based tax had netted $126 million in the first six months. Forecasts had predicted the government would receive about $2 billion in revenue. To discuss the mining tax, the Greens Deputy Leader Adam Bant joins our political editor Lyndall Curtis in Canberra. Adam Bant, welcome to ABC News 24. You. What's your bill designed to do? Close one of the loopholes in the mining tax that the big miners negotiated for themselves. At the moment, if the state governments increase royalties, then the federal government has to give an equivalent amount back. Now, that's no way to secure the country's revenue base, so we're going to close that loophole, as would, was would originally be, recommended. Would that be retrospective? Uh, the, uh, it would go back to July 2011, so um, the royalties that have been increased since then would be taken to have had no effect. That's what was originally proposed by Treasury, and it would raise, we estimate, or the PBO estimates, around $2.2 billion over the Ford estimates. Would this not have been better done when the mining tax bill first went through the Parliament? Because in the end it went through with green support in the Senate and you didn't push for that change, you didn't make your vote dependent on, on that happening. Well, we, we pushed for that change, we pushed for a number of changes. The government made it very clear that the only thing that was going to stick was its deal with the big miners and as a result we've got a tax that the big miners have written and is turning out to be a dud and Labor is now uh, on current forecasts is going to get more from attacking single parents and taking money off them than it will off the big miners unless but, we but fix But in the this end tax. you decided it was better to have something than nothing at all? It's better to have something than nothing at all but because we always Because that's, that's not said... an argument is it that you used with the CPRS well, that, that at that stage you, you th the Greens thought it was better uh, to have nothing at all rather than than the scheme that Kevin Rudd put forward. Well, we've always said that if you can put in place legislation that allows then uh, to be amended upwards and to allow, as, as hopefully Parliament gets more ambitious, it can be increased, um, then we will support that. But we won't support something that puts a ceiling on ambition, which is effectively what the CPRS did. But uh, we've, we've got to fix the mining tax before the budget. I'm very concerned that unless we close these loopholes before the budget, we're going to see more cuts, like we've seen with single parents. And there's just not going to be the money there to fund thing like, things like schools reform. Rob Oakshot, the one of the independents, is support is secondary your bill in the House of Representatives, but are you optimistic at all at Abbott's chances of success? Well, I am. Um, if there's a silver lining to the announcement last week from the Treasurer that the mining tax is only bringing in $126 million so far, it's that he opened the door to further changes. And uh, we've said all along it's not just commodity prices that are affecting this, it's the loopholes. It's the uh, royalties loophole, it's the accelerated depreciation loophole, it's the very low rate of the tax. Now, I'm pleased that the Treasury uh, and the ATO are now going to have a look at that and we've got a solution that's there on the table. But you will need the support of the ALP, at least in both houses, to, to get this, to get your bill through. They've been, the, the government's been defending its mining tax since, uh, since the announcement last Friday and indeed the whole way through. Do you think the, the government's really going to, to flip on this? Uh, I hope they do because the closer we get to the budget, the more it becomes apparent that uh, if they're trying to balance the budget and get close to uh, getting back into a surplus, we're going to need to secure the country's revenue base and raise more money. Otherwise, it's more cuts to people like single parents and it means continually deferring promises to fund public schools. Now, I don't think that's a sustainable position for a so-called Labor government. Now, the government's also announced that it would, it would uh, make changes to spell out workers' rights to request flexible leave arrangements affecting people over 55, those who finished uh, parental leave, people with a disabilities, carers, some groups of people. What are your concerns with that? The Greens have been pushing for some time for laws with teeth that give people the ability to get a better work-life balance. It's something that, uh, especially for carers, we think is critical in this country. What the government's proposing is essentially window dressing. It gives people an unenforceable right to have a conversation. Now, that's, an, that's a right they've already got at the moment. And if you go to your employer and say, I want the benefits of these new laws and I want to have um, some uh, flexible working arrangements, the employer can just say no and you've got nowhere to go. 
appeal rights to, to say fair work? That's right. That's, that's what we need as a dispute settling mechanism so that there's somewhere to go. There will be some places where it might not be appropriate to have part-time work. You don't necessarily want to be able to you know, think it's right to clock off in the middle of fighting a fire, for example. Um, it should be up to fair work to decide whether what the employer is doing is reasonable or not. Otherwise, all that the government is offering is an unenforceable right to a conversation and people can already do that. Would, would there be other occasions, circumstances where businesses might say we'd love to offer you flexible work arrangements but it simply doesn't make business sense? Look, we think that fair work as the independent umpire is the best place to determine um, the needs of the employee and the needs of the employer and balance them up. And it's going to be horses for courses and some workplaces will be able to um, accommodate and some uh, they just might not be able to, perhaps for cost reasons. And so we're proposing a sensible mechanism for resolving dispute. It's what the ACTU says is the best way to go. It's what all the experts in the field say is the best way to go. Because at the moment, I mean, the last time they introduced one of these unenforceable rights, the number of people requesting it actually declined. And uh, people know that what's the point in asking if, I can't, if the employer can just cross their arms and say no and I can't do anything about it. But could it have the, the, the prospect of increasing regulation on business, of, of businesses who have a reasonable case to refuse these requests, having to, having to defend themselves in Fair Work Australia and, and taking up time that they don't have? Well, there would need to be a sensible way of resolving it, but what the overseas experience in places like the Netherlands and Germany has shown is that once you change the law to put this in place, people tend to resolve most of these things at the workplace themselves. And they had less than 20 cases in the first year going to their tribunal, and I expect we'd see the same here. Adam Bant, thank you very much Thanks for your time. Thanks very much, Lyndall. Our political editor, Lyndall Curtis, there talking to the Greens, Adam Bant in Canberra.